Today on the show, I'm in Georgia, and we're going to be talking about my vacation time, visiting my family, and reviews of John Wick 2 and Get Out. I'm in Georgia! So for those of you who didn't know, I was born and raised in Huntsville, Alabama, and I have not been back for three years. It's been a while because I've been working on my show, I've been on that grind. So I finally came back. I've been here for about two weeks now, and I've seen everybody, every family member, across Georgia and Alabama. I've done a lot of crazy shit. I've done golfing. In fact, I'm on a golf course right now in Georgia. I've golfed. I've shot guns. Uh, I shot an AR. I shot a Glock. I shot a Ruger. Uh, some other stuff. It was pretty fun. I sh uh, what else did I do? I ate my sixth hot dog of the year. My dad took me to this dive that he really likes. They're called Dip Dogs. So we ate one of those. You can see it on Instagram. There's a picture of me. Uh, let's see, what else did I do? I went to Cathedral Caverns. Uh, I saw this awesome cave. I've actually been there before, but haven't been there since I was a kid. So it was fun to do that. I also got to get on a boat ride and hang out on Gunnersville Lake. That was really beautiful. I had a lot of fun doing that. It was very peaceful. I really like Gunnersville Lake a lot. So I have visited pretty much every single family member. And, uh, but you know what I also did? I also saw a couple of movies. I saw John Wick 2 and Get Out, and now let's go talk about them. So I'm here in Alpharetta, Georgia at T-Bone's mom's house. We've been staying here through part of our trip. Fun fact, the last time I was visiting three years ago, John Wick 1 had just hit theaters. And like me and my dad, like we don't agree on a lot of things, but action movies are one thing that we can totally agree on. So I was like, hey dad, let's go see John Wick. We did, we had a great time. Uh, I didn't have super high expectations for it and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was like, like way better than I thought it was gonna be. I had so much fun with John Wick 1. So now that I'm here again, I was like, well, hey dad, John Wick 2 is out. How about we pick up where we left off and we go see John Wick 2. The man, the myth, the legend. I will say with John Wick 2, my favorite scene was the opening scene. The first like 20 minutes of the film were like amazing. Like the car stunts were like out of control. Although it hurt my heart to see them like destroy that Mustang, you know? I was just like, no, like it's such, I, I love Mustangs. I grew up around Mustangs. Like my dad took me to like Mustang card shows. So like, oh my God, I was just like, oh, that poor car, you know? But it was so awesome. And seeing the mob boss, you know, talk about John Wick, how he's the boogeyman, you know? And it was just like, so good. I had so much fun watching the first 20 minutes of that film. And it was like so pumped. But then I think like that was kind of like, they blew their load. Like that was the best part of the film. And then from there, it kind of was like, okay, okay, okay. You know, it kind of became a little monotonous seeing him just like grapple with people and shoot him in the face over and over again. The, I did, although, enjoy the scene where him and that other dude who's like on the mez mezzanine and he's down here and they're walking through some like train station or something and there's all these people and they're just like silently like choo -choo -choo, like shooting each other, you know, and like nobody else is even, no and no one else around them is even noticing that they're like trying to assassinate one another. Another fun fact, uh, while I was shooting guns in Alabama, which I shot guns before we saw John Wick, so it was like a full gun day, okay, it was like really hilarious. Uh, and there was a guy beside us who had an AR with a silencer and like, yeah, like I heard what a silencer sounded like and yeah, you really can't hear that shit. It's like, pfft, pfft. yeah. Pfft. So John Wick 2 was a lot of fun. There's some crazy amazing stunts, but I think they jumped the shark a little bit where like John Wick has now gone from like being a super crazy assassin dude to being like a Shinigami god of death, you know, where he's just fucking untouchable, which like makes it a little less fun for me because it's like, well, if he's just a fucking crazy superhero that can't die, then like, whatever, you know? Not that I was expecting like some crazy story, but I would have liked to see a little less stunts and a little more story, even though that's not really what you come to John Wick for. I do realize that John Wick is a stunt film. I mean, that's why you come to this movie. It is for stunts. And in fact, the director of this movie uh, used to be a stunt coordinator. John Wick 1 was his first directorial debut. This is his second movie that he's come out with. And I was doing some digging and I found out that not only has this guy been a stunt coordinator for some of the biggest films in Hollywood, but 
He also was the stunt double for Keanu Reeves as Neo in The Matrix, okay? And I'm sure those two motherfuckers hung out a lot, okay? Having to do all of that work to get ready for that insane, like, stunt movie. They became, like, total friends. And now I can see why, like, Keanu Reeves is totally in this, because he's like, yeah, bro, I'll totally be in your film. I know you're a cool dude. Because, man... I want to hang out with Keanu Reeves, okay? Like, that guy seems so friggin' genuine and awesome in every interview I've ever seen him in. Like, he's so awesome. And fun fact, we're still doing the Matrix review. We're just, like, getting on our feet right now. So, like, it's coming, but that's something I really have to meditate upon a little bit more. So, like, I totally recommend seeing John Wick 1. Uh, that movie is, like, so much fun. It sets up this really cool world. John Wick 2 expands upon the world a little bit, but, like, I don't know. It's more of a renter. You don't really need to see it in the theater. And John Wick 2 is absolutely setting up for John Wick 3, uh, which I can't even imagine, like, what they're going to throw at him in John Wick 3. Like, I'm already laughing at how fucking ridiculous it's going to be. So I'll watch it, but, like, probably try to, I don't know, watch on Redbox or something like that. But I wish uh, Chad Stalecki all the success in the world. I think he's slated to be directing the Highlander movie, I heard, so, and some a couple of other things. So I'm interested to see where his career goes. I think that if he gets with some, he just needs to get with like a really good script, you know, and like, he's got the stunt stuff. He's just got to work on like his storytelling stuff, but he's like a director to watch for sure. Even though John Wick 2 may have not had the story I was looking for, I'll tell you what did was the movie Your Get Out. Got that. What? Do they know I'm black? Should they? You might wanna, you know. Mom and Dad, my black boyfriend will be coming up this weekend. I just don't want you to be shocked that he's a black man. <laughs> I ain't never seen you like this before, bro. Meeting family and taking road trips. Don't come back all bougie, man. Okay, this movie has like an amazing script, an amazing story. It was just like. I didn't know a lot about it going in. I was just kind of going in cold. I had seen a little bit of a trailer, but I just, I wanted to just kind of go in cold as usual. And I was not disappointed, okay? This movie, like, you have to go see this movie. It is one of the best horror movies I've seen in so long. I mean, it's like horror movies today are just fucking garbage, okay? They're making, like, Annabelle 3 or some shit right now. So the premise of this movie is kind of like, a twist on guess who's coming to dinner like and meet the parents you know where it's like the horror of having to go meet your girlfriend's parents but on top of that she's white you're black and she hasn't told her parents that you're black so like that's extra fucking stressful okay because like you have no idea how these people are going to react to you and like this film just really exemplifies like what it's like being a fish out of water when you're a black man and you're just like surrounded by all these like crazy suburban white people and like how creepy and crazy white people are you know because it's so funny you see on the news you know like you know and you see in all these movies and all these shows like all these white people in black neighborhoods and, and black robbers you know oh you know but it's like you never see it from the opposite perspective which is like Black people are just as scared of white people. Okay, white people got problems. And this movie plays upon that to a fucking T, okay? It's just, like, so well done. It's so amazing. I mean, even the first scene, you have this guy, and he's, like, in this suburban neighborhood. He's a black guy walking down the street, and it's dark. And he's just like, shit, man, this fucking place is labyrinthine, you know? Like, I don't even know what the fuck's going on, man. He's, like, kind of feels, like, weird, you know? And, like, it's... And he has every reason to, you know? And, like, things don't turn out well. I'm good, actually. Are you ready for this? How bad can it be? So, look, I go do my research. Apparently, a whole bunch of brothers been missing in this suburb. But it's cool. Bro, how are you not scared of this, man? This movie is about something. It's infused with a real horror, you know? Like, real horror plays upon real fears, and that's what this movie does. And the reason movies like Bye Bye Man don't work is because it's been covered. It's been done. We've done it a million times, okay? Who cares? And you know what? Candyman did it better, okay? It's been done better a million times, too. But this makes actual progress in art. It makes actual progress in the horror genre. It's talking about things that are real, and I love it. There's an amazing cast of characters. Uh, I really enjoyed, like, all the actors and actresses involved in this. 
the girlfriend is like, God, that actress just like nailed it. Uh, I love seeing Kath Catherine Keener. Uh, she's like, I just love her in general. So I was super excited to see her. Like, in the beginning, the, the boyfriend and the girlfriend, they're talking about going on this trip to meet her family. And like, it's so realistic. Like it's so well acted between the two of them. You really connect with them as characters immediately. It's totally believable. Uh, and I was all in. I mean, the whole movie, I found myself, like, I would be, like, tense. And I'd have to, like, tell myself to, like, relax, you know? Because it was just, like, the tension is so thick in that movie. And you're just like, what is going on, you know? And it just gets crazier and crazier. Like I said, no spoilers. But I do want to talk about one thing that was just like this added bonus situation that I was just like really took it over the top for me. It also deals with prejudice against the TSA, which is just fucking brilliant it's just like Mwah. like oh, i love you like because even though i'm not a racist piece of shit i do hate the tsa and then they made me go god damn it i'm prejudiced against the tsa fuck you know like ah you got me you know like ah so uh it's perfect it's so perfect <laughs> So since I saw John Wick 2 with my dad, I saw Get Out with T-Bone's mom, Linda. We had so much fun. What did you think of the movie? The story was just so interesting and yeah. bizarre and it kept you on your heels all the time. Trying I know. To think, you know what, what's going on with these weird people? Um, now, the comedy is not one of those where you just ha 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 out loud, but the horror part of it, I... I don't know if you know this, but I like to go to the movies and if it's scary, I go, eek! <laughs> and sometimes it's really loud and everybody in the theater turns around and looks mm -hmm, at me. Mm -hmm. This one didn't disappoint me. I really had fun with my little eek! Oh, yeah. Oh, Tyson warned me going in. He's like, my mom, she jumps. She jumps. She even, she jumped in a, at a theater trailer once or whatever. And like everyone laughed in the audience. So I was aware of, of your jumping and I was excited, but I like that. You're like the perfect test audience because you know when something works because you have such a visceral reaction to it. Now, as someone who lives in a very affluent suburban neighborhood, did it make you look, does it make you look a little different at your neighbors now? You know, do you like, you're like looking around like, oh. Yeah, I'd say half of them are, are pretty much like those people in the movie. Kind oh, of yeah. spaced out for some reason. Yeah. Zombie looking. Crazy white people, man. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot of them. It was fun. Yeah, we had, we had a total blast. I had a total blast. If there's too many white people, I get nervous. <laughs> I was really uh, surprised by this film. I was really amazed by it. Jordan Peele, uh, good on you, dude. But to see him like write and direct this film, I mean, I'm just like, dude, keep going. Like, keep going. You know what you're doing. I was even reading uh, some articles saying that he's got like four more like social horror films that he wants to do. And it's like, yes. Like, I'm so tired of like remakes of like, Friday the 13th, you know what I'm saying? Like, let's get some real horror. Like, let's talk about real things that scare us, you know? And they're not creepy dolls that are haunted, okay? I'm not scared of creepy dolls that are haunted, okay? I'm scared of like, there's a lot of woman horror you could do. There's a lot of black man horror you can do. There's a lot of poor people horror you can do. I mean, there's like a million different social things that you could talk about. But if you think of yourself as an alien, looking down, and we're all human beings, and yet we, uh, are assholes to one another due to how much pigmentation you have in your skin. Like, that's so fucking stupid. Like, it's just like, just so fucking stupid. So I like to think about that a lot, about how aliens would look at us and be like, what are you guys doing? You guys are just like, that's why they haven't come down to hang out with us yet, I'm pretty sure, is because we're so fucking stupid. We can't even deal with like different pigmentation, let alone, you know, an alien with giant head and eyeballs. <laughs> like, really wouldn't like that shit, I guess. We're just assholes. Humans are just assholes. I don't know what our problem is. One thing about Alabama that most people don't know is that it is a fucking gorgeous state, okay? There's forests, there's lakes, there's rivers, there's streams, and like tons of caves, okay? It's like insane. Cathedral Caverns boasts that it has the largest cave entrance that has like of all the caves that have reported for duty and said, oh, this is our cave entrance. This is the biggest one. There might be a bigger one somewhere else. But they also have the largest, still they have the largest stalagmite named Goliath. That was a lot of fun. I've been there before. I don't know one, for a few years, 
Every year my mom would take us to a new cave, so I've seen like a lot of caves in Alabama. Been in DeSoto Caverns, been to like Ruby Falls, I've seen Rock City. So yeah, come see our awesome caves. It's actually really grounding. I felt a lot better after getting out of the cave because I've had a really hard five months. So being in the earth that deep is very grounding. And also my favorite part of the cave experience is when they take you all the way deep, as deep as they'll take you into the cave, and then they turn off all the lights and it's total darkness. I mean, you can't see shit and it was awesome. And I asked them if they said, well, if there are any questions and I was like, can we do the dark again? And then they were like, no. And everyone was like, why would you want to do that? But I was like, I just thought it was awesome. You never get to experience darkness like that. So that's it for my Alabama Georgia review. Uh, also, Get Out John Wick 2 review, and soon I will be reviewing Logan and a documentary about cats called Ketty. And also, Greater Creators, thank you everyone who's been watching the show. Thank you guys for all of your compliments on it. I'm so glad you guys are enjoying it. You can watch one full episode on Frank Frazetta on our YouTube channel, but if you want to see the rest of the show, you have to go to go90.com or sign up for the app. Get it on your phone. Uh, currently, we're talking about Gene Roddenberry. That's our most recent episode. And if you do not know who Gene Roddenberry is, he is the man behind Star Trek. He is the reason Star Trek exists. And he has influenced the world in so many ways, not only philosophically, but also technologically. So be sure to check that out as well. And don't forget to like my video, subscribe to my channel. I know there's some weird YouTube bug happening. I don't know what the whole deal is. I just check and make sure it's chill. I don't know. YouTube's screwing us all over as usual. So.